Hey guys, I'm just trying to continue our lesson four, three, four, six notes. And we are going through, because this page is probably the most important page of learning to identify if triangles are congruent or not. So let's look at number eight. On number eight, we share a pair of sides because of the reflexive property. So that means I have the side, side, side. Congruence is being used. So I have triangle, P and R is congruent to triangle. If I go P and R, I got a matchy matchy, P, Q, R. Now, looking at number nine, you should always look to see if there's something that can be assumed congruent. In this case, it would be the vertical angles, but notice the location, it's side, side, angle. The angle is not in the right spot. If I look up here at my choices, the angle has to either be between or I have to have two angles. Well, I only have one, and it's not between. It's not included between my two sides. So this one is not possible. So then on the next one, on number 10, we're working with these two triangles. And I look to see how they're marked. And I notice I get an angle, side, angle. And remember, angle, side, angle, that side has to be strictly between the, and included between those two angles. So by angle, side, angle congruence, this does work. Now, how do I write my congruence? Well, you name it, just matchy matchy. So I go T U V. And I always use the angles most of the time, so I went from the no mark to one mark to two marks. No mark to one mark to two marks. It's just a way of working with it. Now, I'll tell you right now, I get really particular if you don't use your triangle symbols, so make sure you name your triangle symbols. All right, then on number 11 here, if you notice, um, it. <laughs> It works pretty well. Um, it looks like I have angle, angle, side. But I have to look at both of those correctly. Remember, everything has to matchy, matchy. That means they have to correspond. Look at my opposite side and angles. Are those a perfect match? No, they're not a perfect match. So this one's not possible. And I do believe um, this could be on the test. I've used stuff like that, so make sure you know any of these that you're struggling with, you know are always possibilities that could be on your test. Now let's look at number 12. Again, I'm looking for things that are congruent that aren't marked, and I have my vertical angles. Well, I have a side and I have an angle. Do I know anything else about more angles or more sides? No, I don't. So this would be not possible. Let's look at number 13. On number 13, I left out a lovely letter. Let's put an N there. I'm looking at this one, and I have a pair of sides that are congruent. I have a pair of angles. I need an, either another pair of side or another pair of angles. Well, you guys are getting really good at using the reflexive property, and you realize, oh, yeah, that's a shared common side. Well, look how that spells now, side, angle, side. So that's by the SAS congruence that works. Well, that means I have triangle, LMK is congruent. If I go LMK, that means I need to go NKM. So we gotta make sure those work together. Good job. All right, let's look at the next one. I also have another pair of vertical angles. And in fact, I need to give them two marks here. I look for those almost any time, and as long as I have two lines and the same two lines forming those two angles, I can use this. And when I do, I double check to make sure my other pair of angles are opposite the same sides that they correspond. And so I end up having an angle, angle, side. Now some of you said, well that's side, angle, angle. Well, we always understand it to be in this form. So let's write our two triangles. I'm going to go triangle HED is congruent, so I go HED is congruent to triangle FEG. All right, now let's look at number 15. On number 15, I need to see, I have right triangles, and this is really good, because that me means I can use hypotenuse leg. Um, if I use the fact they're both right triangles, I have a leg and a leg, but I need to have the hypotenuses congruent. Nothing else is marked congruent. I don't have enough information with this one, so this is not possible. Not enough info. Look at 16. Oh yeah, three pairs of side. So I have the side, side, side congruence. So you can go triangle. Um, let's go T-U-S. It's congruent. Now I use the fact that T is opposite the three side, X is opposite the three side. 
one mark, oh, excuse me, u, which is opposite of the two, so I look for opposite of the two, that's w, and then the last one would have to be v. All right, three last examples that I added on here. And notice this is almost like a homework assignment because I want to make sure we understand where these come from. Looking at this diagram, you can see an angle, side, what? Angle. So that's the angle, side, angle, congruence. My triangle is BAC, is congruent to triangle. If I go BAC, B to A to C, I'm going to go D to F to E are congruent. So that one works out pretty well. Then I look at number 18, and the instant I see a right angle, I first try to think, is a hypotenuse leg going to work? Well, that is a pair of legs that they have. And they have, because of the reflexive property, another pair of congruent sides, which happen to be the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. So this one's by HL congruence. None of the other ones would work in this case. So I get triangle DAR is congruent to triangle, in this case, DTR. Let's look at 19. On 19, I look at this and I go, ooh, yay, two triangles. And someone goes, which two triangles? This one right here and this triangle right there. So those two triangles are ones we're looking at. And notice they have a pair of congruent sides, or if you wanted to say a leg, but notice we have a right triangle with one pair of congruent sides it doesn't work. There's just not enough information. All right, guys, I'm just going to stop here. We're going to talk more about um, proofs on the next page.